So this is actually the last tutorial that we are going to do on op amps or operational amplifiers. And the funny thing is even though this is going to be the last one we do on this topic in particular, it's probably, well not probably, it is definitely the easiest circuit that you can use with an op amp. And what we are going to create today is a comparator circuit. And we'll talk about why, even though this is the easiest, this is probably not a circuit that you want to use too often with op amps. So let's jump and look at this really quick. You'll see it's a very, very simple circuit. You have the op amp, you have a reference voltage, and then you have your input voltage and you have an output voltage. Now, as you notice, there is no feedback. There is no way for the output to control the input. And with an ideal op amp, your output has um, basically zero impedance or an infinite gain. So if V in is at all higher than V ref, then your output's going to immediately shoot to infinity, or if it's below V ref, it's going to immediately shoot to negative infinity in an ideal situation. Of course, with a real op amp, it's just going to jump to the positive rail or to the negative rail. So let's go back into that and talk about that a little bit more before we go into some of the realities of dealing with an op amp as a comparator. So first, you'll notice that I said, hey, we're going to have the reference voltage on our V negative or our inverting input, and then we're going to have our V in on our positive or our non-inverting input, and that's somewhat arbitrary. You can easily flip those, and it'll just simply make it so your input and your output are inverted. It's not a big deal. So I just chose to have our reference voltage on the non, or excuse me, on the inverting input so that V out should match the input and how it goes. So basically, if the input is higher than the reference, the output is going to be a high positive voltage. If the input is lower than the reference, then our V out is going to be our most negative or our lowest voltage. Okay, so you may think, all right, this is weird. Where do I need this? And well, it's a comparator. So all you, you're really doing here is basically taking an analog input and kind of making it a digital input because you're taking something where you're going like this and the output's just going to be one or zero or negative or whatever it is, but it's rail to rail. It's going to be either a high voltage or a low voltage, nothing in between. And that's actually the premise of an ADC, an analog to digital converter, is that in essence, a lot of them are designed to do this, but they do it in a lot of very small incremental steps. So it's the reference voltages are very, very small. So this is kind of the basis of an ADC, but it's also useful by itself in other circuits when you just want to say, hey, is this voltage higher than my reference voltage or is it lower? And you'll know immediately, even if it's just slightly higher, you're going to get a full digital one or a full digital zero if it's lower. So that's really the essence of a comparator circuit and some of the more practical applications that you'll see it. And again, it's pretty straightforward in the way it works. Now, the reason why this isn't incredibly popular with op amps is operational amplifiers are not designed specifically to do this. They can do it and they can do it fairly well, but they're more designed to not be completely sat saturated. They're more designed to have that feedback loop and they're supposed to have greater stability so their response time is a little bit lower and if you have it just like this, your circuit will be really prone to noise, especially if your voltage is really close to the reference and kind of going like this a little bit. Your output's gonna be going all over the place. So it's not really the best circuit in the world using an operational amplifier as a comparator. The thing is, is they have dedicated comparators out there that specifically work for this. And so they have, a much, they have a much faster response time. They can shoot from zero to one and one to zero much quicker. They, can, they latch their outputs so it's more stable and they're just better in every way. But sometimes you have an op amp sitting around, sometimes you have a comparator sitting around and it really depends on what your situation is. And if you're in a pinch, this will totally work. And unless you're looking for an extremely high um, unless you're looking for extremely high performance, an op amp will work in most of the cases. Now there's no math to do here. Um, it's pretty straightforward. So I think we're going to shoot, just get rid of this and jump straight into the practical example that I have here. I just have a simple comparator and we'll talk about uh, what I used for the reference voltage because you can use different ways to have a reference voltage. We'll talk about that, we'll talk about noise and all of that jazz. So let me get this all set up and we'll do the practical portion.
Okay, as usual, my breadboard is a complete and utter mess, but let's go through how this is all set up. As usual, we have our positive 10 volts going in right here and our negative 10 volts coming in right here. And then our power rails are basically zero and 10 volts right here. I'm not sure if you can see it that well. Now the difference here is what I have is I have set up a reference voltage. I have two precision resistors right here, uh, basically going between zero, um, zero and 10 volts. So I have five volts on the input. And then I have here a potentiometer and I'm hooked into the middle leg of that. So it varies between zero and 10 volts depending on how I switch it up. So very simple setup. Again, most of these breadboards that I've had in the op amp, um, in these op amp videos, the, the biggest challenge is the, the measuring devices. And even though I don't have the waveform generator hooked up to it, and I only have one of the oscilloscope inputs on it, you just get a lot of things set up for just doing this. And it's, it's actually not that complicated in real life. So let's look at the oscilloscope and tweak the potentiometer and see how it responds. Okay, so right now, if you look at that output, you can see right here that we are averaging about negative eight volts. So we are basically at the bottom rail. And as I tweak this potentiometer and just cause it to slightly change over, oh, you saw it jump up. Now I'm gonna switch it back and it jumps down. Now, did you see those weird little things coming up? All of that noise as I get close to the edge? Yes, that's the noise I'm talking about. Oh, let me get it closer. There we go. That is exactly the sort of noise that a small feed lap feedback loop will help. Oh yeah, see, we can get it really ugly here if we want to. So if I go farther away and it is more clearly one side or the other, that's a nice clean signal. But as I go, it gets kind of ugly in the transition. So let me actually change this to a single so that I can get just that edge and see if we can get it and see exactly what it looks like. There we go. That is the transition. And of the experiments that I've done, this is actually one of the prettier transitions uh, using this op amp as a comparator. And, but you can see that as I'm getting close to the edge, it gets a little bit jagged and then it's not a great straight line. So we are looking at about two milliseconds per division. And so uh, that's, that's about two milliseconds total from top to bottom. So that's not a terribly slow well, I guess depending on your application, that could be a terribly slow, but it's a reasonably fast in some applications transition from high to low. But on the edges, while I'm moving that potentiometer and the dirtiness of the signal, you get all of that ugliness on both ends. Now I'm kind of curious, I'm gonna go the other way, I'm gonna set this back up and see if the signal is cleaner Oh, yep, so it's just as clean, so it doesn't seem to have any, at least this case, doesn't seem to have any difference between going from negative to positive rail and positive to negative rail, because again, that looks like it's about one division or two milliseconds, but we still get that really ugly noise in, in the time leading up to and following the transition, even though in this particular case, I tried to move the potentiometer as quickly as possible, so that's about it with using an op amp as a comparator. It's a very simple circuit. It's a very simple concept, very easy to invert it. You just have your reference voltage on the other input and then suddenly instead of the input going there, it flips. it's not a big deal. Comparators are quite straightforward. The only thing is op amps aren't great at comparators. So if you need something that's faster, that's gonna be a little bit less noisy, one, you need to make sure you do have some sort of feedback in there, some sort of buffer. And you're gonna have a trade off because the the cleaner the line you have, so getting rid of that noise also means the less responsive it's gonna be. So there will definitely be some trade-offs in there like there is with everything electrical engineering related, and that's just part of life. But overall, yeah, if you need to do a comparator circuit and you have an op-amp sitting around and your specifications aren't too crazy high, yeah, it's a great way to not have to buy extra parts. And, and frankly, even an end result production level part, sometimes op-amps are cheaper because they're more ubiquitous. So it really is whatever works best for you. But hope this was helpful in some way, and I hope you've enjoyed this entire series about operational amplifiers. I really enjoyed it. I'm kind of sad that this is the last one that we're going to do. If you did like it, give it a like, subscribe to our channel for all of this good stuff, and we will catch you in the next one.